What is good? We're back on the heels of the NFL draft completing. We have version one Superflex tight end premium rankings for your pleasure. We're going to run through the top 24 here. And we got another show with the uh, kind of later breakout uh, must draft kind of guys. But first, me and Austin are going to give you our first version of top 24 Superflex tight end premium rookie rankings uh so austin how you doing man good to see you what's up casey how are you ready to talk some rookies man top 24 ready to talk some draft content man the the draft was so good i was in philly for the weekend visiting some of my good buddies and just had a great time so i'm excited to talk about i'm excited to yap let's get right into it man yeah i know i know you're probably itching itching to talk so we're gonna go tier by tier we, we like to tier these up as well as rank them um, so my, my last tier is a little long, so you'll get more than 24 for your pleasure from me. Um, but uh, let's just kick it right off. Tier one for me, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison. I don't think we're going to see a big change for me through most of the first round. I don't know that you'll have a huge change, but we'll we'll address that as it goes through. So tier one for me, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison and tier. I think those guys are the, are the biggest blue chip prospects. Would I be surprised if... If neighbors or Odunze are, are right up there with Marvin Harrison, absolutely not. Uh, but the way I've broken this down, I, I have those two guys just standing alone at the forefront. I wouldn't, I'd be really hard pressed for me to trade out of either one of those situations and the other ones might be negotiable. So that tells me I might need to tear these guys up. Um, and I got the quarterbacks and the, the wide receivers tiered up in the next few, but we'll get to that in a minute. Austin, where do you stand with your tier one? Yep. So mine's very similar, but I have Malik Neighbors in as well. Yeah. Right. We have the 101 like Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't change. The 102 is still Caleb for me. And then I have the 103 Malik Neighbors. I love all three prospects. I mean, I, it's almost like why even pick up the phone if, if you own these picks, man? Just just yeah. cash in. Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if any either 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 or all of the wide receivers end up being really good or if it's just one and it's not Marvin, if it's Malik or, or Rome, n neither would surprise me. But uh, I like it. I can I can fucks with the uh, with the tier one from you. So tier two for me, I have Drake May and Jaden Daniels. I'm, I'm going with the quarterback stay in there. We're playing super flex. It's probably the best version of currency in Superflex, the the position it seems to be of of need a lot of, and if we're talking 12 man you know it can start to get thin in a hurry you have any injuries and and we're just we're not even sure if you know once you get out of the first round second round of your startup all of a sudden you're sitting around scratching your head going man there's like two or three more quarterbacks here that i'm sure of maybe and the rest are like eh, if and so i want to go ahead and get as many quarterbacks as i can especially in the rookie draft um, obviously there's some, you know, promise or, or, or bust rate of 50% ish, but you need a quarterback to trade for a quarterback a lot of times in super flex. So like I said, I'm keeping the currency of may and Jaden Daniels up high here. How about your tier two Austin? Where are you at here? Yeah, man, I get it. And this whole process, Casey, I've always been notably higher on wide receivers and yeah. a little bit lower on the quarterback. It, it makes sense. I've it's a little less risk of, you know, risk. Yeah. 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 And hey, man, we're still relatively early in the process. Things can change, right? We just had the draft. We set, we have a long off season ahead of us, unfortunately. But to answer your question, the 104 begins my tier two. I have Roma Dunze right there. I would, man, I'd love to put him in tier one. I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. He's, and, and don't be surprised if he's, you know, in the conversation with, you know, Marvin and uh, neighbors, you know, when we look back several sure. years down the road, I, I love Rome. I'm hundred percent with you. Love Rome. But he begins tier two for me. It's Roma Dunze 104. I have Drake May at the 105. Jaden Daniels is a hair behind Drake May at the 106. Brock Bowers. I man, everybody, I don't get it. I don't understand it, Casey. We're talking about one of the all-time greatest tight end prospects we have ever seen. Then he gets 13 overall <laughs> draft capital. And it's like people are out on him. I mean, yeah. we were hoping he would get top 10, top 15 draft capital. He did. And people are like, you know what? Nah. Raiders, Gardner Minshew. I feel like that's their thought process, and it's not the correct thought process. 
I don't like how people are fading Brock Bowers. I think he's almost turning into a little bit of a value. And then the final player I have in my tier two is Brian Thomas Jr. at Ooh, the 108. Scorching on that one. I I just love I love that the Jags were able to trade back to pick 23, acquire more draft capital, and still land their guy. Obviously, Calvin Ridley out of town. Brian Thomas Jr., man, it's wheels up for him in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, that's that's a little spicy for me, but I I can I can I can understand it. I, I like the landing spot, and I, and I like I like Brian Thomas, uh, but it's I'll, I'll probably be a few tears before you see Brian Thomas for me. Yeah, I agree with the with the Brock Bauer stuff. So I have JJ or I have Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze in the next tier here, like you mentioned. Um, I I got them a little lower. Um, I think be having them a little higher. I think that's uh, a little less risky uh, taking those wide receivers. The bust rate not quite as uh, aggressive with first round high capital wide receivers as it is with quarterbacks. But like I said, currency for me. So that's that's kind of my tier three. I'm going to go right into tier four and five here for me to kind of catch up with where you're at. So I have JJ in a tier by himself. Again, quarterbacks, currency, landing spot was awesome. I'm not the biggest JJ guy, but the, the, I feel like everything really sets up for him well. The draft capital's there. The landing spot's awesome. Uh, the coach is a former quarterback who got the best season out of Kirk Cousins we've probably ever seen. He doesn't have to play right away, JJ, uh, and I'll 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 invest in that. And then then I have Brock Bowers um, as the next player. So I, I tend to agree with you that I'm not necessarily fading him. I ma- I moved him one spot with JJ just because, as you can see, I'm you know more into grabbing the quarterbacks in these drafts. Uh, but yeah, he got the draft capital. He went to the Raiders. It's it stinks for a year, but I mean. At the end of the day, Roma Dunze could have a have a year because he's got two other really good veterans around him. Neighbors could potentially struggle for a year because, you know, Daniel Jones stinks. I'm not I don't think Daniel Jones thinks that bad, but a lot of people certainly do. So some of the top guys in this class could have uh, Drake May might not even play. You know, Jaden Daniels is probably going to play, but Drake May might not even play for half the season, whole season, maybe even in New England. J.J. McCarthy, half season, couple games, full season. Who knows? Uh, so all those guys could could take a take a, a red shirt year almost. Uh, and Brock Bowers is certainly going to be playing. It might not be that fun, but, uh, you know, by next year, you could have an awesome quarterback situation and something that you're really into. And you faded Brock Bowers uh, because, you know, of, of an unsure situation with uh, the quarterback play. Now, the Raiders aren't a franchise that you necessarily trust to maybe get that right. Uh, so that could weigh into it a little but. <laughs> You know, like I said, I've only moved him one spot and I have them in two separate tiers because when I'm on the clock, I've and I've been in these I've been in one real draft and one a bunch of uh, rookie mocks. And I find myself always saying JJ would be the button that I click. So I separated the tiers there uh, for those guys. Um, How about how about you, Austin? Where are you at here? I guess you would be at tier four now, right? Uh, yeah, the tier three, uh, tier three sorry, the, the, the tier three. Right, right. Um, so this is where JJ McCarthy goes off the board for me, the 109. I'll just be blunt. Like, I don't necessarily like JJ McCarthy as a prospect. Uh, he got very solid draft capital and uh, I'm rooting for the kid, man. I hope he proves me wrong. I hope he succeeds. And if there's ever a spot for JJ to thrive, it's here, man, in Minnesota, paired with Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson. I mean, talk about such a tailor-made, ideal situation for this kid to walk into. So, I mean, good for him, man. That That is phenomenal. We hope he crushes. We're, we're wishing him the best. It's just he's not a prospect that I was I was far from infatuated with, to, to put it politely. So, yeah. we'll, we'll see how things play out. I have uh, the very next pick, the 110. I had Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, who landed with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this is interesting, man. Worthy had a, had a unique profile, right? Crushed, crushed, absolutely dominated as a true freshman at Texas. You know, ended up tailing off a little bit and then had a pretty solid year this season, over 1,000 yards. Uh, when I think of Xavier Worthy, I think of, of course, you know, speed is the first thing that comes to mind, you know, field stretcher. And when he's paired with Patrick Mahomes, and, and, and man, like, the number one thing that sticks out to me in this situation is is the Chiefs actions. What did mm-hmm. they do? They traded up. I cannot believe Buffalo even picked up the phone. <laughs> Nemesis, man. let them get in there. I, I, I can't even believe they picked up the phone. Like yeah. the second the caller ID read Kansas City, I would have just been like, nope, disconnect. Good. Yeah. But regardless, that that's a we'll talk about that another day. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. uh, but anyway, uh at the tenth overall pick for me, 
in the uh, dynasty rookie rankings I have Xavier for the end. You know, I don't know. I don't know if he could necessarily surpass Rashi Rice this season as the wide receiver one. I, I'm really not anticipating that. Uh, but there is a lot that I like about Xavier Worthy. I think again, I think it's a good spot, and uh, he's someone that I do want to take a chance on. Uh, the one eleven. And I'll tell you what, man, he's he's really close to a few of these prospects ab- above. It's Ricky Pearsall. I love Ooh. I love Ricky Pearsall. I think he's here. Man, I, I think Ricky Pearsall is really going to turn a lot of heads. I, he did at the NFL Combine. I'll tell you what, and he made himself a lot of money. And that is why he was a first round pick 31st overall to the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I mean, he he crushed, man. He he crushed the combine. He he was so sick at Florida this year. He made some incredible catches. You know, he crushed with Anthony Richardson the year before. Uh, I I mean, I am all in on Pearsall. And and the very next pick that I have, Lad McConkey. These guys were neck and neck. Now this could flip flop. I actually think that I like Lad's landing spot a little bit more. Right paired with Justin Herbert. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the departure of the top two wide receivers in Mike Will and Keenan. There's a abundance of vacated targets in los angeles so we love that for lad but going back real quick to um ricky pearsall i mean there's a chance that debo samuel is gone there's a chance that brandon Ayuk is gone i don't know if it's going to happen i'm just saying it's something to keep in mind in casey we're talking dynasty right this isn't redraft yeah. i don't expect ricky pearsall to light the world on fire and have you know 1200 yards I don't, i'm not i'm not anticipating that i'm anticipating some type of departure potentially in the near future for one of these wide receivers with san francisco or maybe i'm wrong and they just say man we're gonna we're just gonna load up and we got our win now window wide open let's go get it right maybe that's their thought process and that would be that would be very logical like that'd be really wise uh i'm gonna move on i want to i want to talk about the final player i have in my tier oh i'm I'm sorry it it was uh it was lad mcconkey that's correct so so that is the end of of this tier for me tier three Gotcha. So we got similar tiers, just they're just different numbers. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. going uh, tier six here for me. Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Brian Thomas finally makes the appearance for me. Uh, and this this tier has pretty much stayed rock solid um, throughout my process here. And it's not necessarily take clock after after day one had me a little worried of where Lad was going to go. If it you know, if it was going to be a good landing spot and the capital would stay up and, and then right off the rip, I could settle down. Um, <laughs> I had you to didn't even one. mean to, did had you? To, had to get one in there. Oh, you didn't um, mean to. <laughs> and he gets a great spot. So, like you mentioned, Xavier Worthy can bring help bring back with with um, Hollywood Brown. Help back bring back that vertical game uh, for Kansas City that was such a threat to start Patrick Mahomes' career. And then he played point guard for a little while, developed with with not the greatest set of receivers, and now he has another chance to bring that that back. And like you said, the the adversary of the Bills uh, allowing that to happen is kind of wild. So maybe they just think Worthy stinks. I don't know. Uh, but but fun, fun landing spot there. Lad McConkey, you know, m- most likely settling in as your one there in, in L.A. And I-, I love it. He's extremely versatile. You can do a lot of different things with him. I don't think he has to be slid into the slot. Um, you can get him playing that flanker position. I think that's what drew Harbaugh and, and the Chargers to him is that you can do so much with him. He's a real big threat in the intermediates. And then he's this, you know, ridiculous deep threat as well. Uh, again, talking about the combine, he, he really crushed it there. Hands are great. Uh, and, and just a, a hard work and just seems like he's har- just tailor made for what Jim Harbaugh wants to do. Uh, old lad there. And, and Brian Thomas, just a big physical fast, uh, you know, Gets cheaper. Good move for the Jags. They traded back. Game capital got a little cheaper uh, with Calvin Ridley. He could stretch the field. One thing you know he can do right off the rip is stretch the field from the outside position for you, which is what you were doing uh, with Calvin Ridley quite a bit. Uh, and I think Brian Thomas can do some other things. Like he basically they spammed like over routes and down routes or uh, and nine routes with uh, with with Brian Thomas, and, and I think you're going to see that, but I think you can develop him. I think he's pretty good with the ball in his hands, quick feet, all that stuff. Uh, so tier six there for me is Xavier Worthy, Lab McConkey, Brian Thomas. Then it's going to bring up tier seven for me, which is the two quarterbacks. I got Penix and Bo Nix here. Once again, um, quarterbacks as the currency. Uh, I love Penix. You could say, hey, maybe he's, you got to push him down a little bit. That's fine. You might have to wait a year or two. You might not. You know, it might be is 
is a 36 year old quarterback with a plant leg Achilles tear ready to go week one I don't know does does Penix come out and light up camp and say hey we're gonna give Kirk six weeks before we bring him back Penix is playing well most likely not Kirk will probably be out there Kirk doing his thing but there could be a hamstring week six and Penix is in there all of a sudden you know you're coming back off a big injury anything can kind of happen um so I'm not mad at the Falcons. They, they're, you know, we're we're allowed in. You know, I guess it's the same thing. Dynasty people don't want to wait, and and NFL fans don't want to wait. But it's, you know, yeah, you spent the eighth pick overall, but man, they're playing the long game. We're not we're not going to get screwed of not having a quarterback. We're not planning on being up at eight again here next year if Kirk's any, if Kirk is as good as we think he's going to be. Um, so we got to take our shot now of a guy we absolutely love on our draft board. We talk about it all mm-hmm. the time you know get your guys and 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 here we are they did it and everybody's mad at them until it you know if it works out nobody's going to give a shit everybody all those stupid people who have been bagging it won't, won't care at all so i love Penix. i think you know you could have taken jj mccarthy if you were them but you know jj mccarthy doesn't if, if i'm if i'm the falcons i, I want a guy like Pen- the, this pocket passer who can execute with three wide receivers that's exactly what they're going to go try to do out there um with the system coming over from from the Rams there. So I think Penix is a nice fit. We'll see what happens. And then Bo Nix, again, if if he would have went to the Raiders, maybe I'm not as excited, but it does seem like a good fit with him and Sean Payton. Uh, the, the way that Bo Nix operates, a uh, thousand little paper cuts and then a shot, and then the guy he's taking the shot to is a guy he's very familiar with and, and is very comfortable with taking shots with. So I think all that lines up fairly well for Bo Nix. Uh, so I got – and if Penix – was clear and for sure going to start right away like Bo Nix was, Penix would be up there with J.J. McCarthy with me. But the 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 length, uh, duration that you may have to wait, you know, I understand bringing him down. That's the point of the ranking. Hey, we don't want to rank him all the way up here if we don't have to draft him all the way up here per se. Uh, so I got Penix and Bo Nix in the tier seven. Wow. Where, what's your next tier, Austin? Yeah, so tier four is where I kick things off with the 201, the beginning of the second round. I have Keon Coleman, the wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. So, man, I could talk to you for hours about this pick. This is this is really intriguing to me, right? Buffalo, you had them in the NFL draft. They they traded back multiple times. They traded out of the first round, which, you know, to me it's like what are you guys doing? You you need to prioritize wide receiver. You need to go get someone that that you really really like a lot as a prospect. And maybe that's exactly what they did. Maybe they didn't like Worthy, like you mentioned. Maybe they knew that Keon was going to fall to them, 33 overall, the first pick of the second round. And here's what I'll say. 241 vacated targets. You have Gabe Davis out of town. You got Stephon Diggs out of town. I mean, he is is in prime position. Whichever wide receiver they ended up drafting was going to be in prime position. It just so happens to be Keon Coleman. Uh, so I'm excited for, for uh, you know, I, I love the landing spot. I'll, I'll keep it at that. I love the landing spot. Obviously, I would argue, I think most people would agree, Josh Allen, top two quarterback in football. Um, just as far as his profile, though, Keon Coleman, that is like he does have some analytical red flags. It is what it is, right? Early producer at Michigan State. We love to see it. Uh, it could have had, a you know, could just all around better production, I would argue. I, I would have liked to see better production. Uh, like he never had 800 yards in a single season. It's okay, right? Like not the end of the world, just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, yards per route run, his efficiency wasn't necessarily great. I thought his hands could have been better, but it's it's all good, man. He's he's in the NFL. He's in a phenomenal landing spot. And it, it feels like it's wheels up, all things considered, right? Like I feel yeah. like it's kind of stock up for Keon. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, Over, no, you know? I, I agree 100%. I have him slightly lower, but I'm I'm – Mm-hmm. very much up on Keon Coleman. So, you know, that's that's kind of the point of the draft capital in the landing spot. Moved him moved him up quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, next guy that I have after Keon of the 202 is Jonathan Brooks. First running back off the board. And let me just say something, man. The Carolina Panthers got it right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily know if, if I'm the GM, if I would have taken him at the 46th overall pick in the NFL draft. I don't know if I would have done that just because of the position. Um that that's you know we'll talk about that another day a totally different topic i'm just saying they nailed the running back they got the rb1 in in their minds and also my mind as well so i'm happy to see eye to eye eye with them 
Uh, I, I love Jonathan Brooks, man. He's He's been my RB1 basically this entire offseason, and I'm just glad to see that they got it right. I think that the, you know he lands in a very good spot for NFL purposes and fantasy purposes. So I, right. I think Brooks here at the 202 makes a lot of sense. I thought I was going to have him higher, Casey. I thought he was going to be like the 110, the 111 in my rankings. But as I was going through, man, like – I just I couldn't put Brooks in front of yeah. guys like Pierce Hall, Lad McConkey. Like I couldn't get myself to do it. So I yeah. think I'm going to have him at the, you know, the beginning of the second pr- yeah. throughout no, throughout this process. Makes sense. Those guys all got really good landing spots, um, and and we we think we like Carolina p- potentially moving forward. But overall, we 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 hope that Carolina is getting it right. But we don't really like Carolina at the moment. It's a lot so. of hopium there. Oh, right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, all right. Who else you got in this um, year? I, so I have the uh, little bit of a quarterback run right here. I have, and I don't feel super confident for fantasy purposes from these guys. That's why I have them here. I probably like these guys more for NFL purposes rather than fantasy, at least for this upcoming season. Bo Nix at the 203 and then Michael Penix Jr. at the 204. So let me be very clear. Michael Penix Jr. is, in my opinion, definitely the better prospect. He is definitely the better quarterback. He is definitely the quarterback that I prefer. It's the situation that is so difficult for Michael Penix, right? Incredible, immense draft capital, eighth overall to the Atlanta Falcons, but obviously Kirk Cousins, $100 million deal. Kirk Cousins has been historically two things, one, very healthy, and two, productive, right? So we're talking, uh, you know, maybe 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, close to those numbers annually, right? That's going to keep you in the league for a while. Kirk Cousins, obviously professional bag getter. He's the goat at that. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's good on him, man. But but it's that reason alone, that situation that deters me from Michael Penix Jr., at least in fantasy. So that's why I had the fade. And maybe I'm fading him a little bit too much. But I think when we look back in a year, I kind of think he's still going to be a backup if, if things go okay. And it's a big yeah. if, but if things go okay for Kirk Cousins. So that's why I have my rankings. And then Bo Nix, man, he just got drafted so early. What was it, 12th overall 12th, to Denver. Yeah. And it's like... I should probably have him even higher in my rankings, but I just I didn't necessarily love the tape. I didn't necessarily yeah. love Bo Nix as a prospect, and and that's just my opinion. Maybe I'll bump him up a little bit, but that's why I have Bo Nix at the two hundred three, Penix at the two hundred four, and then the final guy to round out this tier in my rankings, Xavier Leggett. Uh, wow, first round draft capital, thirty second overall. Xavier Leggett lands with the Carolina Panthers. I think that they got. A lot of things right in this draft, and uh, I I think that drafting Leggett made a lot of sense, rationally speaking. Um, They needed to add to the room. Obviously, they brought in Deontay. They brought in Jatavian Sanders. They also brought in Xavier Leggett, who I'm talking about, who I'm yapping about right now. I think that Bryce Young is going to be the biggest beneficiary of, of, you know, everything this entire offseason i think he's going to be very very happy with how their offense transitioned from year one to year two uh, he was thrown to the wolves last year and i think the front office has done a really good job the gm's done a very good job at just giving him a significantly better supporting cast yeah so I agree. uh I, I mean xavier Legat, I, I don't even want to take up too much time about him but man i i could go on forever about him like he has identical size to aj brown at 6'1 221 pounds Higher yards per outrun than a Dunze, higher contested catch rate than Malik Neighbors, and more receptions and receiving yards than Marvin Harrison Jr. When you top, when you think about all that, plus a two percent drop rate, uh, just just all things considered, his four three nine forty time, his size, uh, dude, he he checks so many boxes. First round draft capital. There's a lot to like about him. Yes, he did have four years where he struggled in college. I know that that's a Dude, there, there's a lot to unpack with that. Uh, 8% breakout age. There, there's, a, there's a lot more to talk about, but to keep it you know, short and sweet, uh, there is a lot to like about Xavier to get. So that's why I have him at the 205. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. Yeah. <laughs> Xavier, yeah, I, I do like Xavier, though. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people are hating on him because the breakout age isn't, isn't where you want him. It took him five years, but mm-hmm. boy, oh boy, uh, I think that's a fun, fun shot to take. All right, well, I'm going to hit you with a couple tiers here to catch up. Uh, I got at my tier eight, I got Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson. I'm keeping the running backs together. I like both of those landing spots. I like both of the running backs. I think both of them can be workhorses. Um, So they kind of stay together. They didn't really move a ton for me. Um, So that's where I got my tier eight. And then my tier nine, I'm going Pearsall, uh, Keon Coleman, and Adani Mitchell there, or Adonai Mitchell, rather. Uh, with, Get my, it right. with my tier with my tier uh, <laughs> with my tier nine so 
wanted to catch up with you there. I, I like I like the Keon Coleman landing spot, so he's moved up for me. I love the Ricky Pearsall landing spot. How could you not? Both of those go to franchises that you trust. At least, you know, one has a really good quarterback. One has a pretty good quarterback and, and probably one of the best offensive systems uh, in the game. I don't really care what happens with those other wide receivers. Uh, in this year, Ricky Pearsall is going to get on the field. The Niners haven't had um, really an awesome third and it's no shade on on Jawan Jennings cuz when he when we need him and he steps up he is amazing he makes awesome catches on third downs he is a great player i don't ever want him to see him not be a niner but Pearsall's on a whole nother level the niners struggled beating players in in man to man situations um and and Ricky Pearsall's a man beater um and he can he can play inside and out uh, so you can kind of do a lot of different things i'm sure sh- you know if you're keeping Ayuk and Debo Shanahan's already going to be scheming up. You're going to see some new looks out of him and some different uh, alignments of, you know, between Debo and, and Ayuk and Pearsall. So I love that. And Keon Coleman gives the Buffalo Bills exactly what they needed, just a different style of receiver. Uh, I saw somebody on on the Twitters. I, I wish I could give him credit for it. I don't remember who it was, but Michael Thomas being the high-end comp. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought that was, you know, I, I, could, I, could, I could get down with that. And then I was thinking, you know, Alan Lazard, fancy alan lazard a little better alan lazard maybe being being like the lower end comp of things i think keon coleman will work out i don't know how great he'll be uh, but either way i think it's something that the that the buffalo bills drastically needed and then ad mitchell you know of course going to you know a little lower on the draft capital end of things but mm-hmm. lands in a pretty good spot that is pretty open we just need to figure out if anthony richardson can support that supporting cast and if ad mitchell is is um you know he certainly has the upside, but there's there's some there's some downside and some um, maybe call it effort stuff. I don't know how big of a concern it really is, but not always going, you know, 100 all the time. You know, I'm sure people don't love that. I don't love that. Uh, so uh, that's my tier nine. Austin, where are you at here? Yeah, the next year for me, the 206. And Casey, I'm just going to finish my rankings yeah. right here. I'm going to go 26 to 212. Um, I have Jalen Polk, wide receiver for the New England Patriots. Talk about somebody who got phenomenal draft oh, capital. Sure. P- Peter Schrager initially leaked it. He had him at the end of the first and his yeah. mock. And I was like, whoa, Jalen Polk that early? Like, I like Polk, but man, that that is that is that's rich. And he ended, I mean, Schrager is right on the money, man. He's he's so well connected. I mean, that dude rarely misses. Now, now he ended up going 37th overall, the fifth pick in the second round to the Patriots. Uh, this, this, I mean, he, I had to, Casey, I had to bump him up. Like you always say, man, I think you bring up a great point. Like this is just another piece to the puzzle, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, I'm talking about the NFL draft, right? When, when we see the draft capital that these players receive, that's when we have to, you know, really pay attention. And, uh, you know, for him, for him, for Jalen Polk to go this early, you know, it, it, really got my attention you know we're talking about a guy who had seven games of 100 plus yards in 2023 Mm -hmm. uh he's just he was aggressive effective with the ball in his hands uh he man he's just a scary combination of size and speed so i i I really like jalen polk and i love that drake may's there too man i like that they're already building around drake may right javon baker as well um uh he you know another wide receiver that the patriots drafted so I like what New England's doing. I think I think that they're doing a good job. The next wide receiver in my rankings, the 207, the very next pick, Adonai Mitchell. So I'll just come out and say I like Adonai Mitchell so much more for NFL purposes rather than fantasy purposes. I think that this landing spot makes the Colts a better team. I don't necessarily love this for 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 fantasy production. Um, I I still have him, you know, in, in this tier. But, you know, there there is a lot that comes, you know, a lot to like about A.D. Mitchell, obviously, between his 4-3, 40 time, mm. his his size. What is he? 6'2", 6, 205. He's yeah, he's he, he's a big dog. He's a, he's a real red zone Over. threat. And, uh, you know, he, he was great for Texas this season. So all things considered, uh, A.D. Mitchell kind of felt appropriate here. You know, his draft capital, man, he he was a faller, man. He he uh, he fell to the mid second mid to late second, right? 57th overall or 52nd overall to the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, just all things considered, uh, I feel like this is appropriate value for him. Uh, Next on my board, the 208, Trey Benson. So, man, I wanted to put Trey earlier. 
I, I just struggled. I struggled to put Trey earlier. Um, I th- there was a there's there's so many wide receivers in this class that I just I felt like they were just better dynasty assets is is really what it came down to. I yeah. I, I like Trey Benson. I'm still in on Trey oh, Benson. There, yeah. I, I think <laughs> I think that the landing spot was fine. It's great, with, you know. With with you no, know, I I think the landing spot was good, right? I, I don't mean to come off like that. It, it's a good okay. landing spot, man. Funny. It's uh, it's. You know, we, we look at James Conner. Everybody wants to call him Dusty. Everybody wants to give up on him. Everybody Boy, wants him out of the, everybody wants him out of the league. Question. But he's good. He's good. He, but he's good, man. Like he produces, right? He he's he came off a great campaign last year. Sure. He's been pretty healthy. He's he just gets the job done, and, and it might not be pretty, but uh, I, that you know that's all I'll say about James Conner, man. It's just it feels like feels like people are like you know get the hell out of town this is this is already trey benson's job like nobody wants to hear you're no longer welcome you know it's 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 weird man it's uh that, but that's how the community is you know that it, it's out with old and with the new you know it simmons is old i would i would argue you know connor connor in and out banged up a little bit here and there so i like i like it for benson and there's a possible you know one only one year and you know maybe they even cut connor coming into this year save some save some scratch potentially but i like the landing spot there uh, you got anybody else? Well, who's your Who's your last guy in the tier here? I, I actually have four more players to uh, to, to finish this out. Uh, okay. I had Javon Baker at the two hundred nine, another wide receiver drafted by the Patriots a few rounds later. Uh, you know, fifty two receptions, eleven hundred and thirty nine yards this season for UCF. Uh, really, really good producer. Really efficient. Uh, just, just. Just a, a very solid wide receiver all around. Said some questionable things after the draft. Yeah, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, but but I, I like Javon Baker. I'll tell you what, man. I I, I definitely you know, stand up. Obvi- obvi- <laughs> <right? laughs> Obviously, Baker is lower than Jalen Polk, the other New England Patriot receiver in my rankings. I think it's going to stay like that. I think the draft capital was real for Polk, and uh, I, I think that Polk is going to be a real producer for them. But I, I had Baker here at the two nine, the two ten. Blake Cora, man, he is now my RB three in this class. So he he got a nice bump up. Woo! He landed, you know, with the Los Angeles Rams. Yes, it's still Kyron Williams' job. Let me be clear, it's still Kyron Williams' job. But Blake Corum landing there is it's kind of frustrating for. For you know uh, a uh, Kyron Williams owner, I do think that Blake Horn is going to be a thorn in his side. I think he's a good running back. I think he's going to find a way to get on the field and produce. Uh, we'll see. Maybe it's a little bit more of a timeshare this year because it felt like it was all Kyron last year. But uh, I, I I think that Blake Horn is just going to put his head down, going to go to work, and he's going to find a way to you know to just be a valuable asset for the Los Angeles Rams. So he is candidly my running back three in this class. Troy Franklin, the two eleven. Talk about a huge loser for the draft, man. A mm. huge, huge in terms of draft capital, right? He projected Pathetic late first, loser. early second. I need a loser sound bite. <laughs> what a loser. Yeah. But he, I mean, he, he really was, man. Like, we're talking guy that was projected late first, early second, everywhere, right? Yeah. Everywhere in mocks. And he goes in the fourth. And it's like, all right. What went wrong? Why did why did all 32 teams pass on this player three different times, right? There's something that they know that maybe we don't. His production was outrageous this year, like just under 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns with Bo Nix, his new quarterback, mm. his old quarterback, and now, you know, the same quarterback. It was I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I did yeah. like that because they already got that built-in chemistry going from sure. – Oregon together now in Denver so I like that Denver did that and I'll tell you what man now Jerry Judy out of town so what does that mean there's a real chance that this kid Troy Franklin could be the wide receiver two in Denver right I, I I'm anticipating Corlin Sutton being the one I don't I don't think anybody's gonna argue with me there but I think that Troy Franklin has a pretty wide open chance at, at being the receiver two in this Broncos offense would you would you agree yeah I think you'll see Mims probably in the slot uh, mm-hmm. Sutton the one and then um, Franklin mostly out wide on the other side there and and you know I think I think the landing spot probably really helped prop back up some save some face save some value on Troy Franklin being tied with with Bo Nix there so um, I think that was that was really a really nice little caveat for all the Franklin guys to to you know get a little leg to stand on of well it's fourth round but it's back to the guy that he's already familiar with so um, I can't hate on that at all 
And the last player I have in my rankings, the 212 was Malachi Corley, wide receiver for Woo. the New York Jets. So uh, maybe I'm a little bullish on him, but man, I, I, I like the landing spot. I like that he's paired with Aaron Rodgers. He was the first pick in the third round, the 301 out of Western Kentucky, the Yak King, self-proclaimed, dominated after the catch. You know, not he didn't play against the best competition, but he dominated yeah. that man, and and that's oh, yeah. all he was really able to do. Or, that, or that's all you can do, right? That that's what I meant to say. So good on Malachi Corley. Uh, Mike will on a one year, fifteen million dollar deal. Maybe he's out of town. I don't know. It kind of feels like a prove a deal. Let's see what you still got, Mike will. We'll see. Obviously, get Garrett Wilson candidly the wide receiver one for the New York Jets, but I think Malachi has a real chance of being the wide receiver of this New York the wide receiver two of this New York Jets team for the foreseeable future. So, yeah, no, I, I like, I like Corley as a, as a nice three over there. Rogers typically not a, a rookie lover, but mm. um, they do, they did bring in Mike will Garrett Wilson's good. Um, and I, I, they got Conklin over there and Brees short up the line a little bit. I like it. Corley's a, a fun, different kind of stylistic player. And I, and I think uh, could be really, really good for them. So, uh, I'll, I'll go through mine, finish mine up here. I got tier 10. I got Xavier, Leggett, Ben Sinnott, and Jermaine Burton over here uh, in tier 10. Uh, I like Leggett. I like Sinnott. We're talking tight end premium. This is a, 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 like a, good, you. <laughs> a nice little chess piece uh, for, for the commanders. Um, you know, Leggett and, and Burton are all upside. Yeah, there's some risk with both of those guys. But um, at this point in the draft, I'm okay with saying, hey, we'll, we'll take on a little bit of risk for, for what the upside could be. So that's why I have those guys up there. And then this is where my tiers start to get a little bigger because I see less of um, a value shift. My value kind of is the same on a lot of this, this really big tier here coming up. That's why I have so many tiers because each time there's obviously a tier difference. I see a price difference. I see I need a little bit more or a little bit less to go up or down um, in those tiers. And I like to break it up that way. And, and some of those will merge and shift, get bigger, uh, maybe even get smaller in, a, in, an, in an instance or two. But I like to tier them up so that way I know when I'm going in these drafts, I know exactly kind of what my cost is and, and where those guys um, should be and how much I should expect for them. If I'm going back two, three tiers, then am I okay with that? And, and how much does it cost? So. Uh, my next and last tier is tier 11, which is a big one. Um, I got Jalen Polk, uh, Troy Franklin, Malachi Corley, Roman Wilson, and then the three running backs are in there. Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, and Blake Corum. Um, Blake Corum, probably the riskiest to me out of all those guys. I like him a lot, but I, I, I would disagree that I just feel like the, the, the Rams just had no backfield last year mm -hmm. outside of Kyron Williams. And I think there will be some timeshare, I think, Kyron will probably hold that down for a little while, but I think Blake Corum is a really good player. Um, but I'm 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 fine with with still stabbing at him here. But it, to me, it's got to be late, late, late second, early, early third for me to to be interested in taking Blake Corum just because Kyron was so damn good last year. Um, and, and both of those guys are good. They're kind of similar uh, to one another in in a couple in many ways, really. Uh, and then you have Lloyd and Wright, who are both. Good landing spots just behind either two or one guys, um, which I'm okay with. I like both of those guys a good bit, and I'm okay with taking them. I just don't want to take them where I could maybe stab on some wide receivers who could really jump in value right away. Um, right going to Miami is awesome. That's speed on speed on speed. Um, but, you know, you do have Mostert, who's really good and been familiar with that system and when healthy gets gets the rock and A-chain. He is 38. Um, yeah, they changed made of glass. Everyone is real mad about right. you guys and Jalen Wright. <laughs> that, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I just I, I I'm gonna take a couple of shots on these wide receivers. The two the two running backs I feel good about taking shots on. I'm I'm 100 in on them. And then as we get to the back end of the second, early third, I'll I'll take all all those running backs, and that's that's fine. Um, I just you know we don't number one. In a lot, and what are we talking about? What have I been talking about this whole time? Is currency? What is in in outside of maybe your home leagues? At least for me, what's the worst currency to fucking own? It's a running back who doesn't have a clear path to something. So, if we're I talking about value, half, you know, when you're talking about Twitter and all this, right? Well, when everyone you're hates about, running backs. When you're talking in your about, home league, and you're in your regular ass home league with your buddies, running backs still have value, at least for for me anyway. 
or for us anyway. People want to win. The older, the, you need the, to run it back. The, the mid, win. the mid thirties home leagues. At least the running backs still have some because we remember those days. Um, <laughs> but the, well, you know, Austin's Austin's home league, a little younger demographic, might be a little more risk adverse to the running back because that's what they've known. Um, so, and I think we're getting a bigger redraft crowd coming over and a lot more people listening to dynasty stuff. And it seems that running back, especially in leagues where I don't know anybody is the most devalued currency. So I'm okay with taking the shot on it and they can certainly shoot up in value. They just need something to happen where some of these other guys in front of them don't necessarily need that to have happen. Um, and I, I love Marshawn Lloyd. I like, I love Jalen Wright, and I like Corum. I had all those guys up in the high twos, but I, I got to adjust a little bit here uh, for those guys. So that's kind of where I'm at with the rankings. Any last word, uh, Austin, before we get out of here? No, man, you just got me thinking about old running backs now, man. I'm going to go watch uh, some Todd Gurley highlights after this. Uh, man, yeah. uh, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, man, all Melvin the, Gordon. the guys that the... started this whole mess of not wanting running backs anymore. And then, yeah, well, they started <laughs> yeah. wanting them and then started it not wanting them. Yeah. Yeah, they all uh, they all ended their careers early, uh, but Eric, I think we're seeing maybe a little renaissance of these other guys going a little deeper of sports science and these guys who want to be good and great for a long time being productive back into their 30s and hopefully that'll bring the tide of the running back back up just a little bit and we're getting to the point where they are more valuable because people pick around them and you can get good values and. You, I've won leagues a bunch of different ways, and running backs are one way you can get them if the value is right on them. Um, and that's what this is all about. If the value is right on Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, I'm in. But I'm, I'm just not going to take them um, over a couple of these these wide receivers who can uh, come right out and, and just vault themselves into territory where everybody's going to be just gushing over them. So anything can happen, though. So here we are. All right, let's get the FF out of here. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Um, get mad love that <laughs> unsubscribe because we didn't have somebody in a thumbnail get mad uh, you know whatever cool I don't want to cool, see cool, cool. commenting again if you unsubscribe yeah. I mean go ahead comment whatever you're blocked <laughs> <laughs> alright we'll catch you guys next time peace <laughs>